Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. NASA's second LDSD test had a parachute problem. Happy 50th anniversary to the Twin Otter. The Navy Blue Angels airplanes are getting tired. I'm Bree Cross, it is June 11th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. NASA's Low Density Supersonic Decelerator Project completed its second test flight when the saucer-shaped craft splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of the Hawaiian island of Kauai on Monday. NASA said in a news release that two experimental decelerator technologies, a supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator and a supersonic parachute, were tested. The supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator deployed and inflated. The supersonic parachute also deployed, however, it did not perform as expected. As with a previous test, the parachute failed to fully deploy. While that was not so much of a concern for the first test, it was one of the major test parameters on this flight following a redesign of the parachute system. We guess you could say it is back to the drawing board again for NASA. What do you get when you take a large single-engine utility airplane called the Otter, remove its engine, and replace it with two turboprop engines mounted on the wings? You get something called the Twin Otter along with a legacy of dependable service for 50 years. It also happens that the 50th anniversary of the Twin Otter coincides with the 50th anniversary of the existing Canadian flag. To honor the shared anniversary of the Canadian flag and the Twin Otter aircraft and to recognize the aircraft's Canadian heritage, Viking Aircraft will be conducting a special 50th anniversary celebration tour, traveling to communities in Nunavut, Northwest Territories, and Yukon. The tour starts on July 2nd. David Curtis, Viking President and CEO, said in part, quote, Whether on wheels, floats, skis, or tundra tires, the Twin Otter has been a lifeline of transportation, community connection, and commerce for isolated regions, not only in Canada's north, but also around the world, end quote. Davis will take part in the journey. After the break, Navy Blue Angels Hornet loses a part in flight. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It would seem logical that the Navy Blue Angels aerial demonstration team would be flying the best equipment the Navy's got, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It is reported that during a performance at the Rockford Air Fest in Rockford, Illinois, Blue Angels number 5 lost a portion of the leading edge of the left wing. The failure occurred during a formation maneuver, and the pilot, Lieutenant Commander Mark Tedrow, completed the maneuver and then landed his airplane without incident. Tedrow then got into a backup jet and finished the performance. But the incident does point to some serious maintenance issues with the FA-18 Hornets being flown by the team. The report also says that a fisherman found a piece of a Blue Angels jet floating in a wetland near Rochester, New York after a practice session in May. The Hornets that the Blues are flying are old, and there is a concern that this problem exists throughout the fleet. There is a grumbling that budget cuts combined with the costs and delays in the F-35 program are creating pressure to keep these older planes in service. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. <music> the 
This week, we are proud to introduce our friends at the Society of Aviation and Flight Educators, known as SAFE. We all know that the very foundation of success in aviation activities is education. SAFE is an organization that embraces all facets of aviation education, whether it be on the ground, in the simulator, or in flight. SAFE is a member-oriented organization of aviation educators, fostering professionalism and excellence in aviation through continuing education, professional standards, and accreditation. By joining with industry partners and the FAA, SAFE provides the aviation community with resources to advance the profession and to assist aviation educators in developing skilled, knowledgeable, and safe members of the aviation community. We at ANN welcome the opportunity to be able to work with an organization that takes a professional approach to aviation education. After these messages, a mid-air collision in visual conditions and in radio contact. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A Cessna 172 and a Cessna 185 collided in mid-air while landing at Talkeetna Airport in Alaska. The weather was visual and both aircraft were making position reports on the radio. One person was seriously injured and the others walked away. Marenko Swiss Helicopters has named Philippe Harash as its new chairman of the board. Harash is a French aerospace engineer and entrepreneur. He started his career at the helicopter division of Aerospatiale. On May 21st, Enstrom Helicopter Corporation was awarded the 2015 Business of the Year Award from the Michigan Works Job Force Board. The manufacturer of light helicopters was recognized for its contribution to the economic development of the community. The International Air Transport Association is advocating for an even deeper partnership with governments. They are calling for global standards in the critical areas of safety, infrastructure, security, regulation, and environment. They say aviation is built on partnerships. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has detected deposits of glass within impact craters on Mars. They say such deposits formed by the violent impact of meteors and might provide a clue to the possibility of past life on Mars. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. The whine of a jet engine, flames, and white smoke must obviously indicate a problem with an airplane, right? That's what neighbors thought when they saw all of this coming from a farm east of Springfield, Missouri. But it turned out it was just a truck being washed. Not just any truck, mind you, but Shockwave, the jet-powered semi that appears at many air shows across the country. It is reported that Shockwave's owner, Neil Darnell, had raced the truck, which can top out at 376 miles per hour, on a dirt track the previous weekend, so the truck needed a bath. Part of the washing process is to fire up the jet engines. Darnell told a reporter that he does light the fires occasionally at his home, and it usually means a couple of calls to 911 from his neighbors. But this time, quote, for some reason, it brought out a whole army of emergency vehicles, end quote. Maybe he should develop some sort of notification system when he's going to light the fire. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.